Sarah Claudie. It's our great pleasure to have you over at um, our Murdoch University Dubai campus. Murdoch, as you know, is one of Australia's leading universities. We're so excited to have you speak at our Murdoch Executive Series Leadership Lecture on the Art of Executive Presentation. It's a very interesting topic indeed. I'm Pratika Ravennavar. And my name is Ravi Yusuf. We are both pursuing journalism and screen production here in Murdoch University, Dubai. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Laudi, uh, we know that uh, you've been associated with uh, CNBC Asia Pacific as presenter and Sydney Bureau Chief. And it's a great uh, coincidence that our TV studio in Murdoch University, Dubai, it's actually a replica of CNBC News Studio in Africa. And our chairman, Mr. Zafar Siddiqui and Mr. Rakesh Wahi are also co-founders of uh, CNBC News in Africa. So why don't you start by telling about your experience as journalist and why did you choose this career? Mm. Well, thanks again for the opportunity to be here. Well, in essence, journalism is at, uh, I guess, at the heart of communications. And communication is arguably the way that all the world's problems can be solved. If we could communicate better, then a lot of the problems that we perceive as insurmountable could in fact be, be resolved. So I started in journalism uh, immediately after university. I am actually a graduate of Curtin University, uh, also in Perth, as you know, uh, and moved into a job at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation after graduation, firstly in radio, uh, and um, then I moved to Singapore almost 20 years ago, where I was also working in radio before joining CNBC at that stage as a producer. And obviously over that time, a lot of things have changed in the media. Uh, if you think back to 1999 when I joined CNBC, uh, the internet was really just beginning in ways that I guess you would have experienced as, uh, as children. For us uh, who've been in this working world for some time, obviously these changes meant you know, a, a great upheaval in the way that uh, journalism worked. And uh, so here we are, 2016, and we're seeing so many ways in which communication has changed, the tools of communication has changed. But at its core, uh, the, the fundamental truth remains. All of the world's problems can be resolved through communication. So how do you think journalism has evolved over the years? If we bear in mind that all communication, or rather all the world's problems, could be solved by communication, uh, it means three things. First, we need to listen more. Second, we need to listen better. Uh, and third, it means that we simply have to be more self-aware in the way that we communicate. And so just allow me to maybe elaborate on each of those points. When I say listen more, what that means is really that we need to be more attuned to what's going on outside of our sphere of influence. So if you're currently getting your news through Facebook, um, then you should probably find other sources of information, more direct sources of information as well. When I say listen better, that means that you need to watch all of those things with a more critical eye. And so pay greater attention to what it is that you're actually consuming. And my third point, which is that we need to be more self-aware, it also means that we need to embody the sort of communication skills that we all need in order to be better understood. Our graduates, our senior students like Hiba Naska, she has been working in Sports 360 uh, over here and our another senior student, uh, Ahmed Al Saidi, he has been working in seven days. So do you have any message for our graduates and our aspiring journalists like us? Mm. Well, I, I guess there are three things that all journalists uh, need to do uh, and, and the, the sort of skills that they all need to have. First of all, uh, talk to people. Um, journalism at its core clearly is the source of information. Sourcing information, filtering or, or managing that information in a way that's then better understood for our viewers and our audiences generally. But what does that mean in practice? And so the, the great danger that I see for journalists generally these days is to take too much for granted in what's in the press release. In other words, it's a, uh, an electronic form of journalism where you never really have to leave the office. All you need to do is you know, rewrite press releases or uh, source information that's already available in the public eye online. And I see that as a danger because it, it risks that you lose the real story. You need to go out and talk to people. And talking to people doesn't necessarily mean that every conversation that you have is an interview. It simply means that you go out and find out what people are doing, uh, have, a, have that general curiosity that, that I guess you all need to have when you first started your journalism careers. 
Uh, so talking to people is, uh, and listening, as I was saying before, listening better, listening more, uh, and having greater self-awareness uh, are all part of the, the role. And that's not really changed since the beginnings of journalism. Um, I actually, my long-run plan is to become an investigative journalist. Mm -hmm. um, I got inspired by the movie Spotlight. Um, I always wanted to become a detective mm -hmm. and then I always wanted to express my views as well. So I found journalists as a, you know, like proper uh, platform to express my views as well as, um, you know, uh, do my detective uh, interest and just pursue all, all in one. So journalists, uh, journalism is my platform mm -hmm. to uh, just express my opinion and do what I want to do. So do you have any um, like tips for me and people like me, students like me, who would want to choose investigative journalism as their career path? Well, uh, and congratulations on, on choosing this. What a very interesting career path. Uh, you know, as I was saying before, the, uh, the, the state of journalism, uh, we're at a, at a crossroads in a sense. Um, and as I've mentioned, to some extent, it's very beneficial that so many people with mobile phones and an internet connection can be journalists. But it also means that you have to work harder to set yourself apart. Um, so a couple of pointers, I, I would say, actually for anybody in any line of business, whether it's journalism or, or research of any other sort. And the first is, ask more questions. Um, and I, I guess as journalists you always do ask questions, obviously that's, that's, what your, that's what your role is. But the quality of the questions also needs to, needs to be very sharp. Uh, there are uh, so many commercial interests that you will come across as, a, as an investigative journalist. And uh, asking the, the hard, honest questions is uh, really the, um, while core, you know, you can always sharpen that pencil a bit more and ask tougher questions, I guess is what I'm saying. The second point, um, apart from the questions, obviously, how do you formulate these, these difficult questions? And very often, uh, that has its foundation. Those, even the simplest questions have their foundations in depth of research. Depth of research is, again, something that you'd say, hey, you know, as journalists, of course that's what we do, we do research. But coming back to my earlier point about talking to people, go beyond the electronic research. Don't just take for granted what's written in somebody else's press release, in somebody else's article. And you know, the recent uh, US election and uh, the Brexit decision prior to that are cases where that research hasn't been deep enough, where talking to people hasn't been done well enough. The reason why we are surprised at the outcome of the US election and, and, and Brexit and, and other surprise issues like that is simply the fact that we were too cocooned in our existing uh, information sources. We were paying too much attention to what our friends on Facebook were saying and not enough attention going outside of our bubbles to find other information sources that will help with our depth of research. So the depth of research comes first. On the basis of that, you can then ask more difficult questions. And the third thing I would say is simply to uh, stand up for yourself. Have the courage of your convictions. Do what you feel is right. Because if you're an investigative reporter, you'll have a thousand people telling you that you're wrong, that you are damaging rather than helping. Uh, and that you don't have uh, the rights for whatever reason to be reporting in the way that you aspire to. Uh, and that courage uh, does take, well that conviction does take courage. Uh, and, and you will soon find that the, the tougher and the better the questions are that you ask, the more resistance that you'll have and the more depth of research you'll also need to have in order to substantiate your questions. So first, as I was saying, uh, have the courage of your convictions to conduct the research that's so necessary to knowing what your subject matter is really about. And that research includes talking to real people uh, and then ask those difficult, if uncomfortable, questions. That was very informative, sir. Um, now that we were trying to get to know different forms of journalism, uh, could you tell us how business journalism is different from other forms of journalism? Mm. Well, to be frank, it shouldn't be any different at all. Uh, frequently people assume business journalism is all about numbers and markets and simply incomprehensible uh, things that they, that they say on television. Economics, interest rates, oil prices, uh, all the jargon. But in truth, business journalism is about breaking down the jargon. And, and unfortunately, a lot of uh, business journalists um, seem to predicate the way that they write on, 
on an assumption, on a smug assumption that they need to be smarter than anybody else. Um, in actual fact, a business news story should be just as easy to understand as any other story. And uh, if you find yourself bamboozled by too much jargon, too many numbers, too many statistics, if you find that the people who speak on television are speaking a language that, as a layman, you don't understand, then uh, clearly they haven't done their jobs. And so, you know, as we set about trying to solve all the, world, all the world's problems through communication, it's really then about saying, how do we communicate better? How do we uh, reduce, in fact, combat ambiguity? What sort of training do we need in order to communicate better? How can we, you know, uh, find those stories, source those uh, contacts, up, ensure that people have those skills? I'm pretty sure that uh, your journey uh, wasn't that easy. So, have you ever faced any difficulties in your, um, I don't know, in your journalism practice? And how do you overcome those difficulties? Well, you know, any, every job uh, brings with it uh, the usual run of difficulties uh, that simply come with working, uh, working with people. Um, but I have to say that the, the toughest part in journalism is overcoming yourself. Uh, and allow me to elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, in essence, when you are uh, on television or you are writing a story, perhaps a controversial story, you know, to your point about investigative journalism, maybe you're writing something that you know other people are going to dislike you for. So what is the most controversial story you have covered and how did you prepare for it and deal with it? Hmm. Well, my most controversial story, uh, and I'd have to say there were quite a few, uh, the, the toughest con and most controversial stories, you know, when you say controversial, let's define that. What does controversial mean? Uh, it, it means that uh, there will be people who are upset about what you're writing, in essence. Perhaps it's going to have some big impact on the market. Maybe it's going to have a big impact on somebody's career. Uh, and clearly, again, you need to understand what it is that you're, what it is that you're doing. It's not just about shooting from the hip with, uh, with allegations and, you know, he said, she said type of arguments. It's really to uh, dig into the fundamentals of the story and understand what it is that you're actually doing. A lot of that comes with age and experience, I have to say. Uh, I was 22 when I started in, in radio and as vehemently as I would have defended my, the depth of my knowledge at the time, uh, clearly I'm now twice that age and I'm thinking far more about, well, how much of that, uh, that ability to deal with those controversial stories, to have a feel for uh, what impact your story is going to have, um, to understand the ramifications of, of your story, uh, really is something that you'll develop with age and experience. Uh, your job is to uh, be open to, to those sort of experiences, to, as I was saying earlier, to listen more, to listen better, and to be self-aware about what it is that you're doing. Um, but all, again, as I was also saying, it's, uh, you, know, you shouldn't be scared of, of that. Uh, if you have that depth of research and the courage of your convictions and the strength of your questions, uh, then uh, you look forward to a very rewarding career. How different do you find journalism in Australia compared to journalism over here in the Middle East? Mm. That's a very good question and, and clearly there are some regional differences. In fact, there are differences even within countries, uh, certainly in the Middle East but also in Asia. So I've been based in Singapore for almost 20 years and uh, clearly the Singapore media system is very different from that in Malaysia, different again from Indonesia, different again from the Philippines, Thailand, Hong Kong, China and elsewhere. Uh, and so clearly there are regional differences. At the same time, uh, the, uh, the media systems are not standing still. Uh, there's also been a great deal of development in the media in Singapore. You know, this idea that Singapore's media is somehow um, backward or in some ways restricted are, are really very outdated concepts. Uh, and if you uh, pick up a Singapore newspaper or a Singapore website now, you'll see that actually the, the, the questions are far tougher, the thinking far broader, the opinions far more diverse, and, and in a sense, uh, you know, brought about by citizen journalists um, uh, far more rambunctious than, than you might expect. And that's something that we would see, uh, we would see everywhere. Uh, and again, you know, it doesn't really matter where, which part of the world you're in. Now if you're communicating in the media, if your job is to go out there and, and appear in the media, then you also need to be aware of the regional differences, the country by country differences. 
you need to be aware of the changes even within the country and you need to bear, bear in mind first and foremost that your, um, your biggest threat really uh, isn't the journalist sitting opposite you, it is ambiguity, it is that hyper-connected world, it is the, the, the threat of not enough listening uh, and not enough self-awareness. So again, that's why I've made it uh, my mission post my career at CNBC to, uh, to help people communicate in a way that, that busts ambiguity and that, uh, that simply fosters better learning and, and uh, more tolerance and uh, more active listening and so on. What's the most exciting and interesting story that you have covered so far? Well, uh, goodness, uh, you know, over, over the years that I was in, in radio and television, um, you know, I, I conducted probably anywhere between six and eight interviews per day. So in radio, I had a two-hour slot on, on ABC Radio, first in South Australia, then in Perth. And, you know, when you think about it, eight interviews per day, five days a week, that's 40 per week. And considering I was at work for 48 weeks a year, 1,600 interviews and I, I did this job for 14 years. So you can multiply it through and you can see that I've done well over 10,000 interviews in my time. And, um, you know, so when you ask me what's been the, t the toughest interviews, my counter question is which one of those 10,000 do I pick? Um, but, you know, interviews are, are difficult for different reasons. Sometimes interviews are difficult because the guests are quite uh, combative. Uh, in, in my time in Perth, for example, the uh, government of Richard Court was in power. Uh, they brought in a lot of industrial relations changes and so I frequently had the uh, industrial relations minister Graham Keirath on my program together with the chief of the Trades and Labour Council Tony Cook and, and so they were very combative. They used to try to outshout each other uh, on, on my program. So that was certainly a, a, something that you needed to, to learn to manage. Uh, and then there are stories uh, that were simply difficult or controversial because they were defamatory. Uh, you know, the number of times I had to press that dump button in, in my radio studio, I, I would have lost count. The number of times people have said defamatory things, you've got to be very quick to understand what is defamatory uh, and whether there is a, a, uh, a suitable defense of, of defamation. Finally, uh, could you give us a gist of what our guests could expect at your lecture tonight? Well, uh, as you know, my, uh, my big mission in life is to solve the world's problems through communication. And so I'm hoping that they'll pick up tips on how to do that and hopefully join me in this quest. You know, um, that, that sounds very noble, but in actual fact, look at all the problems that we have. Well, thank you so much thank for you your so time, much, sir. sir. Uh, it was really nice having you over here and you shared some really nice information and um, the guidance, the tips that you give, the advices that you give will really help us. Mm -hmm.